Good day to each of you. I hope all of you watching know how much you matter and how very loved you are. We've been journeying through the Bible and last week we went all the way back to the beginning of the world. God's story really is a love story for the ages. This week we'll start talking about how God's story includes us. So get ready to open your ears to learn more about God's love after praise and worship. All right, Kingdom Kids, let's bless the Lord today. Woo! Clap your hands like this. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name.
The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Genesis, chapter 3. Out of the deep, deep love, God created the whole universe and filled it with life. From great lumbering hippos to jewel-winged hummingbirds and sleepy sloths, the earth was filled with sound and color. But in all the world, there was nothing quite like God. Nothing that could think and feel and love like God. Let us make human beings so that they are like us. Let them rule over the fish and the birds and the creatures. Out of the dust of the earth, God formed a man and a woman, the very first people created in God's very own image. God placed them in a beautiful garden along a river. How about a swim? And coconuts for an afternoon snack. God gave Adam and Eve the entire world to care for and explore and enjoy. They had only a single rule. You may eat fruit from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you do, you will certainly die. <laughs> oh, definitely not touching that tree. Life in the Garden of Eden was perfect, crossing the spring from the earth as soon as seeds were planted. Every animal was friendly and ready to play or offer a ride. Adam and Eve never argued over how to spend their time. Your turn to choose. Best of all, Adam and Eve got to walk and talk with God. In the cool of the evening, they would walk alongside God under the shade of the leafy fig trees. You made the most amazing sunrise this morning. Yeah, we can't wait to see what this sunset is going to look like. But into all this beauty slithered a false note. One afternoon, as Adam and Eve searched for wild mushrooms, the serpent uncoiled himself and slid along a low branch beside Eve. Looking for a snack, are you? Oh, hello. How about some luscious fruits? Eve glanced toward a grove where beautiful fruit trees stood. The tree in the center stood taller. Its fruit seemed to glow. Did God really say you must not eat fruit from any tree in the garden? We can eat fruit from the trees, but God did say you must not eat the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden. Do not even touch it. If you do, you will die. And, well, die does not sound like a very good thing. In spite of herself, Eve took a few steps closer to the grove. The serpent slithered along. <laughs> you will certainly not die. God knows that when you eat fruit from that tree, you will know things you have never known before. Like God, you will be able to tell the difference between good and evil. Eve looked at the shining piece of fruit on the central tree. It hung right and heavy. God loves us. Surely he wants good things for us, like knowing more? Eve reached out her hand with one finger. She touched it. Nothing happened. Maybe it's a test. God actually wants us to try the fruit, but he wants us to know without telling us. Sure. That's it, sweetie. God had given the rule to protect Adam and Eve, knowing all of the terrible things that would happen if Adam and Eve chose to disobey. God was trying to keep them from pain. But Eve started to question in her heart. One little taste can't hurt. Eve gave the rich fruit a gentle tug. It came away in her hand. She took a bite of the juicy flesh. Oh. Eve called out to Adam, who was a short distance away. You've got to try this. But isn't that from the... The fruit looks so amazing. 
Adam decided he didn't care. Let me have some. Adam, too, took a bite. A strange expression crossed his face. I never thought about that before. New ideas and thoughts crept into the minds of Adam and Eve. None of it made them feel better. Uh, 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 we're not wearing clothes. I need to cover up. The first time, Adam and Eve were filled with shame. Quickly, they stitched together fig leaves to wear. As evening shadows lengthened, they heard God walking through the garden. Oh no. Quick, hide! In trying to make their own happiness apart from God, Adam and Eve had broken their relationship with God. Sin had entered the world. Where are you? Adam cowered behind a berry bush. I heard you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten the fruit from the tree I commanded you not to eat? Ah, uh, it, it's, it's the fall of the woman you put here with me. She, she gave me some of the fruit from the tree and I, I ate it. God gave Eve a turn to speak too. What have you done? The, the serpent tricked me. That's why I ate the fruit. God's own heart was pierced through by what people had done. God told the serpent, I am putting a curse on you. You will crawl on your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. Because Adam and Eve had turned away from God, they could no longer find a home in the Garden of Eden. From now on, growing food would be difficult, back-breaking work. Giving birth to children would be painful, and family relationships would be complicated and hard sometimes. And one day, Adam and Eve would die. You were made out of the ground. You will return to it when you die. I... I'm cold. Though people had broken their relationship with their Creator, God's deep, deep love for them had not changed. God even made clothes from animal skins for Adam and Eve to wear on their journey from the garden. And already, God had a plan. One day, God would become a person. Jesus. God's very own son would walk on earth among people, showing them how to live in relationship with God again. And Jesus would one day lay down his life to break the power of death once and for all. Because in the end, God's love always wins. I know the Adam and Eve story is a sad one. It's unfortunate that the enemy's cruel plan destroyed the beautiful life that God intended for Adam and Eve. And it's sad that God's first people didn't trust him fully. Because of that, sin entered the world and Adam and Eve had broken their relationship with God. And that caused all people, including you and me, to be born in sin and separated from God. But remember, God never, never stopped loving Adam and Eve. And he continues to love the rest of us, even though every single one of us have sinned. There have been times when all of us have messed up. We might have said something that wasn't true, or we might have behaved poorly when we were angry or jealous. All sin, no matter how small or how big, breaks our relationship with God. But thankfully, God loves us no matter what. In fact, God loves us so much that he sent Jesus to make things right, to fix what was broken by sin. Sin may separate us from God, but when we sincerely believe in what happened on the cross, and repent and choose to turn away from sin and all the bad things that hurt God, hurt others and ourselves, Jesus becomes the bridge that allows us to be in relationship with God once again. Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for our sins. He laid down his life so that we can be forgiven. And because Jesus took on all sin for all time, 
even the ones that haven't happened yet, we can have a relationship with God that will last forever. Jesus saved the day for us and the salvation he offers lasts for all time. All we have to do is trust Jesus and put our faith in him and God's holy word. Now that is epically good news. Do you remember our memory verse for this month? It's 1 John 4 and 10. It says, here is what love is. It is not that we love God. It is that he loved us and sent his son to give his life to pay for our sins. That's what love is all about. It's so good to know that God loves us and I hope you'll never forget it. Let's pray and thank God for loving us and sending Jesus to help us be free from sin and close to God. Dear Lord, precious God, we don't know how to thank you for what you have done for us. The depth of your love blows our minds and we love you so much for all you have given for us, all you sacrificed. We are so appreciative. Thank you for loving us, Lord, no matter what, and for sending Jesus so that we can have a relationship with you. Please teach us how to trust you even more. Help us to run to you instead of hiding from you. Help us to remember how much you love us. Help us, God, to lean on you. We appreciate the opportunity to look back and remember, to see examples both of what went wrong and what went right, so that we can make choices that honor you. We ask your forgiveness for the moments when we are like Adam and Eve, moments when we sin, moments when we fall short, moments when we fail to trust you. And we ask that you will help us to be more like your son, Jesus, and the one who knew how to be in perfect communion with you. Thank you for being our foundation. Thank you for being our stability in moments when nothing makes sense. We thank you, Lord, that you choose to carry us through those seasons and to help us. We want to thank you for remembering us, for loving us, for making a way for us, for being our friend, for being our king, for being our everything. Strengthen us for each moment of our existence. Help us to have peace and trust in moments that make no sense. We love and appreciate you, God. Amen.